Hey everybody, and welcome back to I Do Everyday Automation, where we talk about everyday DIY projects to make your house smarter and your life easier. We will continue our networking discussion as it relates to the AT&T firmware update that caused a lot of users to lose IP pass-through and port forwarding, and why I chose the Ubiquiti USG Gateway to solve that problem. Like a lot of you who may be tuning into this video, I searched the web, I couldn't find any YouTube tutorials, I actually found a few message boards and an instructional on how to do this pass-through method, which basically eliminates the residential gateway altogether. As you can see, I only have the power light on, the broadband light is not blinking, I only have this plugged in as more so of a power loss backup, and I'll explain that in the video. But this solution pretty much relies only on the residential gateway. This backup cable, like I said, whenever you lose power, will restore the connection from the ONT that's in this closet. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and jump into the tutorial. All right, so before we get started here, I just wanted to give a bit of a disclaimer. Most of this information I've compiled from other resources. This is in no way, shape, or form me trying to take credit for the great work these gentlemen have done to put this stuff together to make it easy for the average user like yourself or myself to actually have a bit of freedom from one of these big companies. And I am extremely glad that they did so. So we'll go ahead and jump in real quick. Uh, the two main sources that I use for this one uh, gentleman, I'm going to assume his name is Taylor Smith, just based on his blog site. And this is where I got most of the information after, you know, scouring a few forms here and there and seeing links to his resources. And he has it pretty well spelled out. The one issue that I had, however, just trying to go straight off of this was that I'm just going to assume it's slightly outdated just due to the, all of the different firmwares that Ubiquity has pushed out. Uh, so there's a couple of things that have changed and a couple of things that are actually easier and have changed for the better. But uh, he's pretty spot on with these four to five resources that you'll need. You'll need to download uh, or have an SHA, SSH program. Most people use PuTTY. An SFT pro, SFTP program like FileZilla. Uh, you'll need to uh, open this JSON validator just for future uh, for future reference in the video. And you'll need to download this EAP proxy, which was prepared by, uh, and I, again, uh, forgive me if I'm messing up anyone's names, Jay Sofian. He, he prepared a GitHub repository with the EAP proxy files that you'll actually need to make sure that the controller runs the right script in the background. And then five, of course, you just need to know your credentials for your USG. And here's just the link to the, the EAP proxy on the GitHub. And I'll make sure I put all of this information in the bottom of the video. So with that being said, we can go ahead and jump in here. All right, so you're gonna go ahead and connect directly to the USG via its uh, default IP address, 192.168.1.1. And here you can see the current settings. It looks like it's pulling DHCP. So we'll go ahead and also install the unified controller if you haven't already installed it locally on your machine. For this installation, we're gonna do the local unified controller instead of the unified cloud key. Uh, but that method works just as well. So we're gonna go ahead and wait for this controller to install. still initializing give it another minute or so all right so now the unified controller is ready to go we'll go ahead and double check the configuration and just make sure that DHCP server is turned on for the local LAN settings I just noticed that this helped during my installation. Uh, it may not during yours, but just for the sake of the video, I'll make sure I mention it. And then we're gonna go ahead and open 
and launched the browser manager for the uh, Unified Controller. And you're going to get this as, uh, security certificate. You can ignore it and just go to Unified Setup Wizard. Close this out. All right, and then you can just hit next here. Check the box next to the device gateway name and MAC address and hit next. You can skip the configure Wi Fi setting for now. And right here, we're going to set up our controller access. You're going to input you know all the relevant information here you know you're gonna create a administrator username and password and then you're gonna do the same thing for device authentication just remember the device authentication is for logging directly into the device and the first uh, set of credentials is logging into the unified controller And then you're going to go ahead and hit next. And then confirm and hit finish. You can set up the cloud login access now, or you can skip it and come back to it later. All right, now we're going to log in with the controller login information. We're going to go down to settings. Just quickly uncheck enable connectivity, monitoring, and wireless uplink. Go ahead and click on network. And we're going to create a new network. Click on LAN 2 and we're going to name this network LAN 2. Just go ahead and give it an arbitrary IP assignment and subnet. Make sure you turn off DHCP server and hit save. All right, and just go into WAN and make sure you turn on the VLAN ID and set that to zero and hit save. Okay, so now that we have the preliminary work done in the Unify controller, we can go ahead and get started with the cabling. So the LAN port obviously should go into the LAN port of the USG and into the LAN port on whatever your network device is, whether it's going straight into a PC or whether it's going into a switch or if it's going into a wireless router. The VoIP port, which is the port all the way on the end, it may be labeled WAN2, LAN2, or VoIP. That should plug straight into the ONT port on your UVerse modem. And then the WAN port should be the cable that comes directly out of the ONT, and it should go straight into the USG WAN port. The next couple of steps are going to involve you using PuTTY and your SFTP program. So you're going to make sure you go ahead and extract the EAP proxy and EAP proxy SH files from your zip that you should have downloaded. You're going to right click on the EAP proxy.sh file and if you're using Notepad or something like that, you should be able to edit it uh, in Notepad. You're going to make sure where it says if WAN that it's set to ETH0 and where it says if LAN that it's set to ETH2. It may say e if router. Just change that if router out to if LAN. All right, so go ahead and open up PuTTY and FileZilla. And FileZilla, you're going to go ahead and put in the USG IP address, your username, password, and port 22 for SFTP access. Go ahead and navigate to the location where you save the EAP proxy master folder. And then you can copy and paste from the web page the location on the USG where you need to move the files to. And don't worry if it's not there. This copy and paste will create that folder location. You just select those two files and drag them over. And there you go. They're copied over. Okay, so now we're going to open PuTTY. You're going to type in the same IP address. Log in. You're going to put your username and password that you created for the device, not the controller. All right, and now we're ready to use the sudo move command that you see on the web page. You can type it out. Or if you don't want to type it out, if you're afraid you're going to uh, transpose something or not put enough spaces, you can go ahead and go back to the web page. Scroll down and highlight the script, copy it. And then go back to PuTTY and just paste it in the window and hit enter. All right. 
So now what you can do is if you are using the cloud key, you're going to copy your your JSON uh, config gate dot gateway dot JSON file. If you haven't already created it, uh, now would be the time to reference the web page, pause the video and create it. Uh, if you're using a local controller like I am, you can actually copy this file. Make sure the MAC address for the router is in there for the AT&T router. Go to the location on your machine. It's usually on the C users, the user folder that you're using. Um, and then there should be a Ubiquity Unify file. You're going to drill down to data, sites, default, and you're going to paste that config.json file. And then from here, we can go back and reference the web page again. There's going to be a Python script that you're going to want to run in the PuTTY window. Just copy and paste that and hit enter. And in some instances, this will work. And if you see the request being returned, then you're done. In other instances, you'll have to do a little bit more configuration. So we'll go ahead and we'll close out the command for this real quick. And you can close it out by hitting uh, Control C. So some of you may have to go back and do like uh, like myself and copy all of the set interface commands. I just copied it into a quick notepad here. Make sure you add your router uh, information for the MAC address. I'm just going to do a quick show interface just to make sure all my interfaces are up and that they're uh, all showing correctly. And you can see the ETH0 isn't getting DHCP. So then we're just going to run the cat config uh, command from the web page and then type configure. Now that you see edit, it's ready to receive the remainder of the commands. So from here, this masquerade for WAN command, everything below that, you're not going to copy it over. You can start with uh, the one that ends with speed auto and copy everything up from there and just paste that into the command bar and hit enter. So with the changes to the firmware, I found that this helped. Uh, and okay, I'm sorry. So you guys are going to want to go ahead and hit commit as well and then hit exit. And now you see uh, it says the configurations have not been saved, but you don't need to worry about that. So we're going to run that pseudo Python command again. And now you can see how quickly it should return a response. So that tells me that uh, DHCP has started. We're getting a response from the ONT and we should be getting uh, an IP address. It's going to take the controller a little bit of time to, to refresh. So let's go ahead and log directly into the router. I'm sorry, into the gateway. And you can see right here we're getting DHCP and we're getting an IP address from the ONT. I'll do a quick little speed test. Speeds are looking okay. So yeah, like I was saying previously, some of you will have to um, add those commands. And for me, using everything but the masquerade line and everything below it worked. And I ran through this configuration probably six times until I figured that out. So now we're going to run the, the last um, portion of this where we're going to save the configuration. So you're going to uh, copy the cd forward slash config scripts uh, post config command and hit enter. And then you're going to copy the chmod plus x command and you're going to hit enter and then you're going to hit reboot I'm sorry you're going to type reboot now and you're going to let the controller reboot 
and then from there I just like to log back in just to just so I can see what's going on through the the user interface instead of waiting on everything to boot up through uh, through putty all right so it's real important that you follow the directions here and make sure you go in to configuration manage device and provision it so that the USG pulls the correct provisioning from the controller the controller is basically from this point gonna tell it what the configuration needs to be on the USG and since we cannibalize the uh, the part in the documentation where it told you to use a longer uh, config.json file most of the graphical user interface won't conflict with what's in that file it'll just get the router assignment from the JSON file for your uh, for your AT&T residential gateway and that's it so the one thing while all of this is going on I'll, I'll make sure I mention and it's just gonna take a couple more cycles for it to come up is that anytime you lose power the main reason we leave the uh, the residential gateway connected from AT&T is if you lose power let's say you know you have a bad storm or something or just a surge and your devices need to be reset you're gonna need that AT&T residential gateway to pull a new IP address from the ONT or at least that's that's basically what I've seen people in the threads and the forums mention so now everything's showing up we have our black um, circles here on the main page we're gonna go ahead and go to a web page and we can just try uh, ubiquity that comes up so let's go ahead and do a speed test at speedtest.net. That's coming up fine. I'm going to go ahead and launch it here. As you can see, a four millisecond ping. That's not bad. We're still pulling around 60s on the down and close to 60 on the up, which is pretty good considering. I'm only paying for the 50 meg package. You get a little bit of flood, which is, you know, understandable with most of these circuits. So other than that, guys, I think we are good to go. So if you have any questions, um, again, I'll follow up at the end of the video with, uh, with where you can, um, you know, find most of this equipment and where you can go to get it from here. Alright guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you guys learn from this video and it helps people just like the information that I scoured the internet for helped me to bypass the gateway and get my port forwarding back. If you guys have any questions, just leave me comments down below. All of the stuff as usual that we talked about in the video will be in the description including links to where you can purchase the USG and some of the other equipment that we may have discussed. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that we can continue this journey and you guys can learn hopefully more along the way. Thanks and I'll see you guys on the next one.